What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. This video is going to be part two of the ethical dilemma series I'm doing for the MMI. We're gonna be looking at the second half of the kidney transplant ethical dilemma that we looked at in part one. If you guys haven't seen that video already, do check out the card over here or find it somewhere on my channel and watch that video first. All right, without further ado, let's continue on to part two. So generally in the interview for ethical MMI scenario questions, you're going to get the main question, you're gonna give your answer, and then they'll ask you follow-up questions to sort of see how you would change your answer based on new information. Something else that's important to think about is the age of the patient. And a lot of the time in MMI interview questions, they will ask you the scenario and then they'll say, what if the person was 39 instead of 29? Or what if the person was 29 instead of 39? And they will always try and catch you out on this. They always ask this age angle. And the answer to that question is that age has absolutely no factor in determining who should get these organs. Remember that list I told you five seconds ago? Age was not on it. Age, gender, beauty, income, religion, all of these factors are not important when deciding who gets a kidney. Everything is based on clinical evaluation, logical decision-making, rational decision-making. Making. For example, if you're deciding to give a kidney to a 15 year old or a 70 year old, it might be easy for you to say, well, obviously give it to the 15 year old because they have their whole life ahead of them. But the truth is you don't know any of that. The 15 year old could overdose from drugs at the age of 20. The 70 year old could go on to live until they were 100. So in that case, if you gave the kidney to the child, it would have only lasted for five years. Whereas if you gave it to the elderly person, they could have lasted for 30. So you never know. And age just is not taken into account in these decisions. Like I said, they often try and catch you out with these questions in the MMI, so do be careful. Another thing that they could potentially act is, would you feel differently if the patient had a live donor who was willing to donate a kidney to them? So this is a very good question because it brings into light two of the four medical ethics pillars, autonomy and non-malevolence. So autonomy is the idea that each person is their own individual and they should decide what they want to do with their own body. And non-malevolence is the idea of doing no harm, is that doctors should not inflict harm on any of their patients. So let's talk about autonomy first. If the person who wants to donate the kidney is a fully autonomous person, that meaning that they have full competency, full mental stability, and they also have informed consent, so they know the situation, they understand the risks, and they still want to donate the kidney, they are still fully autonomous, then that is within their right, even if doctors might not think it's in their best interests. However, we need to take into account the idea of non-malevolence. So if doctors are going to remove a kidney from this patient, that patient is going to have one less kidney. And with that patient having one less kidney, their life is going to change. They're not gonna be able to do things the same way they used to be. And that also has inherent risks with the procedure and following the surgery. So really this is a cost benefit ratio situation. We have to weigh up all the pros and cons of allowing this donor to donate their kidney. Now, regardless of whether this person is able to donate that kidney, like we said before, the woman has a GFR of 28 and we would need to wait until the patient gets down to a GFR of less than 20 before we can put them on the transplant list so that we can maximize the amount amount of lifespan that they have after the procedure. Okay, so now in the case, I'm gonna give you some more information about this potential donor, and then we're gonna reassess if we think this specific donor should be able to donate their kidney. So let me give you guys a little bit more information. She's a 65 year old woman, and you take a history which reveals she is a hypertensive smoker on one medication for successful blood pressure control. So successful meaning that her blood pressure is below 140 over 80. She has a family history of type two diabetes, and her daughter's cause of kidney failure is anca vasculitis. There's no other significant family history or kidney problems or significant medical history. Blood tests show no cause for concern. Okay, so do we think that this woman should be allowed to donate a kidney? And if yes or no, what are some of the factors that we would take into account when making this decision? So first things first, let's break down this woman's history. First of all, she's a 65 year old woman. So as we've established, one of the things we take into account when deciding whether someone should receive a kidney is the age difference between the donor and the recipient. And the reason for that is that you don't wanna give a 20 year old a 70 year old's kidney. And that's because over time, of course, the 70 year old kidney is going to have degraded in function. And if they have other risk modifying factors like smoking, hypertension, diabetes, that's also going to affect that person's kidney function. So she's a 65 year old woman, probably not the best to give a 30 year old person that kidney because you want the younger woman to live a full, long, happy, healthy life. So you wanna give them the healthiest possible kidney that you can. Second thing, we know that she's a smoker and smoking, as I'm sure you know, has many harmful effects on the body, 
one of which is definitely to also affect the kidneys. Smoking can restrict blood flow to the kidneys. It, of course, can have many effects on the vasculature of the body. Smoking can also affect the blood pressure medication that she might be taking to control her hypertension. So smoking overall is definitely bad, and it's probably having an effect on her kidney function. And in addition to that, we know that this person is already hypertensive. They already have high blood pressure, which, as we've said before, is one of the biggest risk factors for developing kidney disease. Even though now it's controlled, it could have been really high in the past, and it will have probably done damage to this woman's kidneys. So these three points definitely don't make this person an ideal candidate for kidney donation. There's no point in donating this kidney, which is not at its optimal to somebody who's 30 years old. If five or 10 years down the line, they're gonna develop some major complications and maybe need a new kidney. Now let's talk about not doing harm or non-malevolence to the donor. So if we're gonna remove this kidney from the donor, that donor is going to have one less kidney for the rest of their life, and that's obviously going to affect them in many ways. If they're already at risk for developing any kind of kidney problems, we don't want to remove one of their kidneys because then they're much more likely to end up having kidney disease and kidney problems in the future. However, if this person is fully autonomous, has full mental capacity, and is mentally stable, and is able to, with informed consent, still know that they want to go through this procedure, then they are an autonomous human. And the answer to this question of whether they should or should not be able to donate their kidney is really, really tough and I don't know. Basically, you have to weigh up all the pros and cons of the conditions that we talked about that the person has and their ability to want to give up that kidney. And this is something for an ethics board to decide. But this is why we have an entire medical ethics board, an entire team that meets up to discuss a single patient, all the different factors that are relevant to help them make that decision on whether they should receive a kidney or not and who they should receive that kidney from. And hopefully what you've taken away from this is that even if you don't have a concrete conclusion or answer at the end of the video, showing your thought process, your decision making, and how you reached your conclusion or I guess all the factors that you took into account is what is really important. Ethical decisions are rarely going to be easy to make, even though we have so many guidelines to follow and so many people to refer to and get expert opinions from, it's usually down to a case by case basis and it can be very, very difficult. And that's something that I think you should definitely acknowledge in your MMI interviews, you know, just acknowledging that these are very, very difficult decisions and that it takes a lot of people to be able to make them is something that's important that you should mention in interview. So another follow up question that they might ask you is that, you tell all of this information to the potential donor who we've said we don't think is a good candidate to donate their kidney and they come back to you and say you know what i really want to donate this kidney to my daughter i would do anything for her i just want to improve her life i want to save her i want to make her feel better please 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 let me donate my kidney so how would that affect your decision and obviously the answer at the end of this is that it would not affect your decision you've made your original decision based on clinical evaluation very rational logical uh, factors and you're not going to change that decision based on an emotional plea or a social desire. But what you definitely should mention and talk about is that this is obviously very difficult. You want to do what's best for your patient. And you can definitely mention in an interview how this is a very difficult decision, how you want to do the best thing for both of your patients. You want to make the mother happy because obviously this is affecting her and not being able to help her daughter. And you want to do the best thing for the daughter by giving her the best possible kidney that she can get. And one last follow-up question that they might ask you is they might I say what if the donor had a gene that made them at high risk for having hypertension or high blood pressure and how would that affect your decision so in this case of course if the donor has a very high risk of developing high blood pressure later in their life we want to make sure that they keep both of their kidneys because if they were going to donate one of those kidneys to the recipient and now only be left with one kidney and they developed high blood pressure and that was gonna cause them kidney damage, that's obviously gonna to lead to a lot of problems for them in the future. So if they did have this gene that would increase their risk of blood pressure in the future, you would wanna make sure that they do not donate as they need both of their kidneys. All right, guys, and I think that's it for this video. This has been a really long case to cover, quite a big ethical dilemma. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the different factors that we might consider or take into account when looking at an ethical dilemma like this. Organ transplantation is something that does often come up in MMI interviews, so it's something you probably want to prepare for. If you guys have any questions, do feel free to leave them in a comment down below. Do like this video if you enjoyed it, and do consider subscribing to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this from me in the future. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace.